He's gone! Oh my God! Can you believe it? Johnny Bench has tied it up. The Cincinnati Reds win the World Series in four straight. It was a sweep. In the dirt, it's a wild pitch. He's got the ball to the game. That ball is fair. Cincinnati's ahead. Two games to none. Welcome, Joe Randa, to Cincinnati. Adam Dunn has done it again. Benzinger backing and calling, and the 1990 World Championship belongs to the Cincinnati Reds. Marty, yes, this is Adam from Milwaukee. Hey, Adam, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? Good. Do you think Scott Hattenberg is a good player? Done up there with the bases loaded, the outfield deep and around toward right, and the 1-0 on the way to the plate. Swung on, long drive, right field, and this one belongs to the Reds. And a high drive, hit back into deep right field. And De La Cruz is, oh my goodness, look at this kid run. My, oh my, that is a triple. Matt McClain's first big league bomb. Spencer Steer's first big league hit is a home run to straightaway center field. Votto's done it again. The pitch. Votto swings high in the air. Right field. Yes! He pointed to the dugout to say, I told you. That is Joey Votto's 315th career. Go ahead, Remy. Only Johnny Bench had more as a red. And I can't tell you how much it means to play in front of Everyone here in Cincinnati as a Red, uh, what a gift, what a tremendous gift. So thank you, thank you. I think I can speak for all of Red's country. Joey Votto, thank you. All right, well, welcome into Chatterbox Reds live from Goodyear, Arizona. It took us a long time to get here, we know. And it took the Reds a long time to get a lot of outs today as well. Uh, the White Sox, 14, the Reds won. The good news is, is it's just spring training. That's what we're going to tell ourselves all trip. But if the Reds win, it's great. That's a good thing. Uh, so we'll just play the, we'll play the positive side of the aisle no matter what. There was a lot that happened in this game. Uh, the most entertaining thing that, that happened in this game was two random strangers screaming at each other throughout the ballpark, having a full-blown conversation in the middle of the game. But I'm just glad we're here. The weather is unbelievable, if we're being completely honest. And also, the last housekeeping item before we get started and talk a lot of big-time Reds baseball here is uh, we might get kicked out. I don't know. We don't know. Maybe they'll just come and tell you, you guys got to get out. But as you can see behind us, that is the ballpark lights. We'll see how long they keep them on. Uh, but welcome in. We appreciate everybody. I thought there might be like Maybe five people watching. I'm trying to get myself in frame here. Nick's got like a, a live button. That's, is there a way for you to clear that live or no? Is that there? That's there for good. Is that there for good? Maybe. Yes. I think it's. I think it's. All right, it's there for good. He's saying it's there for good. Um, but here's the thing. 
we're gonna we're gonna uh, do a show. Hopefully, we don't get kicked out. If we do get kicked out, though, uh, for the podcast sake, uh, Chatterbox Reds, we will re-record down at the Airbnb that we're going to, so that will not be affected. But that's uh, that's all the housekeeping items that I have. Everybody, uh, we have a special guest that I have to introduce. Reds Daily. Uh, I don't know. What, what do we go? What, what, I mean, we, we've kind of we built up a relationship here a little bit. We're on first name basis. Uh, what do we call you? You can call me Greg. Greg. All right, Greg. Greg. Greg's cool. Greg Daly. Okay, Greg Daly. Perfect. Um, Twitter Greg. Twitter Greg. Uh, Nick. Nick is uh, he's he's running the the ones and twos as they say I think in the business. He's trying to make sure that we're live in all the places that we're supposed to be live in. I'm trying to make sure that I'm somewhat framed in. I'm going to figure that out here in a minute. And Elliot's just here. So. Thank Elliot, you. how are you doing? Wow, what an introduction that introduction that was. Yeah, yeah I, introduction. I, introduction. Uh, my brain's fried, but we're, it's been we're, fried. We're having we're having fun. I, I I'll tell you what, we get we get to Arizona today about three seconds before the game starts. The, the poor lady singing the national anthem forgets all the words. Uh, the, the that the, is the, true. The fans in the in the seats have to carry her home. It was a bad omen to start, and then and <laughs> and then the Reds unfortunately, uh, they just get boat raced. They get boat raced here at their home park. They look terrible in every facet of the game, except for one guy. Two guys. Except for two guys, but specifically one guy. One guy who gets slandered nonstop by Twitter Greg, by Trace, by Nick, by Evan, by Jacob Tissett, by the entire city. This guy gets slandered and slandered and slandered. I want him traded. I want him sold. Send him to Siberia. Jonathan India, time and time again, when you need a hit, and he was the only hit, tonight uh outside of an ellie de la cruz ellie de la cruz bloop and a who's the bum that hit the other hit who's the who's bubba, the, thompson, bubba, bubba thompson. thompson bubba thompson uh hungry bu- bubba bum uh and listen I, i'm not gonna overreact to a spring training game because that's fine that's what it is it's just practice it's a little fun ball they all come here they play golf during the day and at night they try to at least uh try to stay sober enough to to play a full nine inning game and tonight they, they didn't come to play. They played a lot of golf today. Didn't come to play, but it's great. I'm doing great. I, lo- I, I The weather is fantastic. This ballpark is beautiful, beautiful ballpark, uh, and I'm ready to go. Yeah, yeah. Ballpark is uh, is beautiful. Uh, I wasn't sure what to expect. It it's it's got a it it's a minor league feel. If you've been to a lot of minor league games, this is my first ever spring training baseball game. It feels like a minor league game with major league players playing. Uh, Buck Farmer looked good tonight, though. How about we, that? We got to shout out Buck Farmer. That's He's big game, Buck. I think the only pitcher that didn't uh, give up uh, a 450 foot tank job to the White Sox tonight. But uh, yeah, the the ballpark's great. We ran into some some cool people. Got to talk with Chris Welsh. Got to talk with Marty Brenneman. Uh, it was a fun night. Uh, hopefully, uh, the 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 rest of the week goes a little better uh, scoreboard wise. But uh, it, it was uh, nice to to be at a baseball game in early March. It was. It was very nice. That was the thing that I appreciated the most. I walked in there. It was beautiful weather. There was kids playing out here in the like the little uh, the little I don't know small field they have back there for all the the folks that aren't interested in watching uh, some spring training games, which are usually like fourteen years and younger. I kind of noticed, um, but overall, it was it was probably better than I expected it to be. The only thing, uh, the lines before we get into some serious Reds baseball very talk, serious. which I know we're going to do here in a minute, uh, the lines, they need to figure that out. The, the concession stand situation, we, Terrible. we, the red scored uh, one run and, uh, we missed it because the, the concession stand line will took about 35 minutes to get a hot dog and a couple drinks outside of that. Fantastic. I will say regarding the lines. Yeah. So, so Jeremiah and, and, and my guy Greg here, we were walking to the back of the stadium towards the, you know, where you sit in the lawn uh, mm-hmm. out in the outfield. Those lines were empty. There was just the, the, the concessions there. Nobody was there whatsoever. So that's the play for tomorrow. I don't know how, though, on, on the front side or on the uh, by the catcher side. Yeah. There's they just call that behind home plate. Behind home plate. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. I, I, again, we're going to hey, listen. My brain is we're just starting to get it back a little bit. So let me get it back. Sure. Uh, the lines were, th- were 30 minutes. Can't have 30 minute lines. Can't do it. Won't do it. Yeah. Uh, and starting tomorrow, I will not be going to those concession yeah. stands. We'll start. We'll start in the outfield. Uh, the good news, uh, though, the, for those that are keeping track at home, uh, the Reds do not play uh, at home the next two days. Elliot will keep saying that he'll be here tomorrow. He will not be. Uh, <laughs> but as moving forward here, Nick, to get in some well, serious. We'll be here tomorrow. We'll, we'll be here tomorrow in the backfields. So we're going to try to Early. do as much spring training action as we possibly Wake can. Up, and, uh, yeah, I don't know if these guys know it yet, but uh, we got to get up super early. Nick is running the show now, and that's perfectly fine. you got to work hard. Nick's working hard, 
And uh, we will be doing that tomorrow on the backfields, trying to get as much spring training action as we possibly can. Reds are in Scottsdale tomorrow playing the Giants. We're going to try to figure out if we can maybe make both of those things happen. And then later tonight, tomorrow night, I should say, uh, for those that are uh, for those that are wondering what the uh, content plan is, we we are going to as long as the Airbnb has what we would call internet, uh, which you need for an internet company, uh, then we will live stream us watching the UC versus Kansas game tomorrow night, and uh, in the night that way. That's the plan. So today, from a Reds perspective, it's fourteen to one. If we're being completely honest. It is spring training. There's only so much you can take away from it. The, the disappointment, though, is a fairly reasonable term to use when it comes to the pitchers. But I'll start off on an optimistic side. I know everyone says I'm toxic, but I just want to say there was one there was one play that was made in that game that I still remember now. And Matt McClain made a play up the middle, and it reminded me why he's not moving off of second base unless hell and high water come. And that's the only thing you imaginable is you have to move him to shortstop because he made an incredible play. Um, that again, I don't know if there's really that many second basemen in all of major league baseball make. So I know they didn't get to see it at home, but it was a fantastic, it was, it was top 10 sports center. I thought Jeremy Candelario looked very comfortable at third base. So I think that that infield with Candelario at third, Elliot short, McLean at second base can be a real plus. Uh, it was weird seeing Jonathan Indy at first base. I, I know we've seen some, some pictures, but. When you go to the ballpark for the first time and you see Jonathan Indy at first base, it, it's kind of a little bit of a shock. But, I mean, he looked fine. There wasn't really a whole lot of plays that he was involved in. But, uh, look, if Indy could play a decent first base defensively, uh, he he looks good. I mean, that home run was absolutely crushed opposite field. Uh, so, look, I, I, I hope Jonathan Indy can absolutely, uh, you know, take, take uh, the reins on this sort of, I don't want to say second life because he's always been a big league player. But this, this you know, the Reds were clearly shopping him this offseason. They didn't find what they wanted. I hope he takes advantage of this, this opportunity to play some different positions. And I think he can. I think he'd be a very, very valuable uh, contributor to this team. That's a great segment. I mean, what a great segment that is. Let's let's talk more about it. Jonathan India, again, this is a gamer. This is a guy who has lost his spot at second base. And, and I, Trace and I were talking about it earlier this week or last week. doesn't matter what week it was. I think there was a little bit of maybe a sense of pride when you see all these rookies come up. And they're outperforming you because he was our rookie. He was the rookie of the year that people laugh at. I know people say it's a fake rookie of the year, but I think it's real. I think he's a damn good player. He's still a young player. That's uh, another. I think you, you see Matt McClain and Ellie De La Cruz and you're like, oh, Jonathan India's washed. The guy's like 25. So let's let's ease up on Johnny India. Dude's playing all over the field. Gamer hitting home runs left and right, playing first base. He is going to play wherever David Bell finds in his heart to play him. Left field, first base, third base, doesn't matter. And he's going to be ready for it. That's what you need on this team. I think I think one final thing with Jonathan India, I think, you know, as I talked with Nick the other day on the podcast, is he's I think he's almost underrated at this point. I mean, Reds fans have just kind of bashed him for a little bit. Um, he we, we had high expectations, obviously, after, you know, his great um, rookie season. And I think with all the talent on this team, he doesn't have to be amazing if he's an average you know player and hits home runs like he did tonight and plays a decent defense and plays all over the field. I think you're taking good things and that's going to be, you know, a positive for the red. So um, I think if he can just be average to above average, you're, you're getting what you want from Jonathan. That's right. India. India is a guy that when you win rookie of the year and you play on a team that doesn't have a lot of good players, you're immediately kind of sought after and thought of as one of the top players in the franchise, right? You, you would think that they should be one of your better players. The reality is that if you want to win a World Series, Jonathan India, it's okay of him being one of the average players on your team. Maybe I don't want to say below average, but he doesn't need to be a superstar. The only I'm I'm pumping the brakes a little bit on the first base stuff. I mean, it's it's early, too early to tell if he can do it or not. We'll find out. If he can, it's it's a huge addition. It's a big plus. Um, but as bad as the his bat has to play, that's the thing, and it, and it has looked good. So he's come off of an injury, or he took some time off. He's looked good so far. Um, listen, with Noelve Marte out, it's going to be all hands on deck, and hopefully he's a, he's a guy that, that we can rely upon. And we've relied on – this franchise has done uh, – he's not really let this franchise down significantly anyway. No. So let's not act like he has. It's just that defensively he was put in a position that maybe he should have never been put of in the first place. Like, that's being fair to him. He, he might have never belonged at second base, 
They threw him out there. He never was supposed to play second base. When he got drafted, no one was like, that's our second baseman. That never, that was never a thing. So, and I, and I was, this is what I was talking to uh, Elliot about a little bit is I, I think it is fair to say as a competitor, if you're Jonathan India, the last thing you want to hear about is all of these young rookies coming up that have never played one single out in major league baseball and how they're going to be significantly better than you. You will take that personally. And I think that's a reasonable thing to do is to take that personally. Um, now, I do think he's seen those kids come up. He's seen, the, he's seen those kids play, and he probably thought to himself, you know what, I kind of want to be a part of this. I see this young core group. It's the same, in a, in, a, in a weird way, it's the same way Joey probably felt about the young kids too, right? You heard Joey all last year talk about how this young core, they're just fun, and it's it's good to be around. Um, so we'll see. Jonathan has seemed to change his, uh, his approach or his at least the, what he says to the public on how he feels about moving positions. So I think the reason there was, I guess, slander is the term that you would like to use. Correct. And that's fair. The reason that that existed in the first place, in my opinion, is because most of us felt like he didn't want to move off a second base because he felt like he was a second baseman. And that's where that's where there was strong disagreement. So but otherwise, uh, Stevenson did have a pass ball or two, maybe two. three, two. Um, and I know they're going to call him wild pitches, but any more in Major League Baseball, if, if the ball isn't, you know, literally almost a strike, they give the pitcher a wild pitch. I like my catcher to block them, um, but he has hit the ball relatively well. So I'm not trying to crush Tyler Stevenson. But there's not a whole lot that went right tonight. I don't know. You're the you are the Mr. Positivity guy. What yeah. what what would you say that you've seen tonight that you are very 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 happy about? Buck Farmer. Buck Farmer pitched well. There was a solid mm. inning. Uh, I mean, that's really that's about inning? it. What inning was that? Uh, I don't know. It was. It was one of the like ones. Six, the end. Seven, it was one of the ones that didn't matter when the other team just stopped trying. Well, I don't. Well, it, did, it mattered they, to Alex Young. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, I, but to be fair to Alex Young, the umpire wasn't giving him any calls. Uh, you look at that, and you give up what nine straight hits, all rockets, each one harder than the next. Right. Uh, our guy Taylor behind us was like, "Well, he's not getting our, he's not getting the calls tonight." Right. Uh, you, some would argue that the White Sox players were begging for those balls to be thrown anywhere near a zone, so they could just missile missile these baseballs off a wall somewhere. Uh, but yeah, that was that was wild. I did I, not to change the subject too much. I think they hit the ball harder tonight, the the White Sox, than I've seen at least in a baseball game, maybe in my life. Who was it? Robert? Robert. Is it Robert or Robert? Doesn't matter. He hit a ball. I'm telling you, when he hit it, as soon as he made contact, you knew it was out of the stadium. Missile. It went over the batter's eye, 450 yeah. dead center. Craziest home run I've seen in a long time. Probably a 500 foot plus oh, home run. It was. It really was. It's a shame there's not stat cast in the ballpark because that would have been one of the fun ones to at least go back and look at and see how far it actually oh, yeah. went. Exit Velo. He he legitimately hit it over the batter's eye by about 75 feet in the air. So he had two home runs. Good tonight. for him. Well, that one. What the other one wasn't as impressive. Yeah, that one was very. Impressive. I, I would say uh, Pagan and, and Alex Young probably give them a pass because they're coming back from injury. They're not not even close. Um, Ashcraft. I mean, I would say. Probably there's some fair concern. They were, it was not, it was hard contact that he was giving yeah. up. Um, and, and then it felt like he was maybe nibbling a yeah. little bit after that, trying to overcompensate. He was not sharp tonight. Yeah. Fernando Cruz was really not sharp tonight. Nope. Uh, the two home runs that he gave up were, 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 they were, were not they were cheap. Smoked. They were not cheap home runs. So there weren't really any cheap home runs tonight. No. Yeah. They, it, it seemed like every home run they hit yeah. was at least a couple rows, sections deep. In yeah. the outfield, Ashcraft. Uh, Ashcraft's Ashcraft. the guy. Obviously, started the game. I don't know. It's one of those things where, of all of the starters, I feel like Ashcraft's the one that everybody always pegs as being the guy that's probably going to be. And I don't want to say let down, but the one that has the the, the biggest opportunity to, re to regress uh, based off expectations, if you want to call it that. He wasn't very sharp. He, he couldn't find the zone a whole lot. He and again, I, I don't know box score wise, stack cast wise, if they have kind of uh, basically his margin of miss, but. When you can't locate, it's hard to get out in the major in, in the big leagues, right? So, um, but again, it's spring training, so I, I try I try not to make a big deal about all of this. But at the same time, it's sem semi concerning that that the White Sox, a team that before the game, some were saying they were going to throw the season like the White Sox or the Black Sox, excuse me, mm. um, a, a few hundred years ago, um, came out and scored fourteen runs on 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 what was it, fifteen hits, sixteen yeah. hits? I don't know. So. Against major league pitching, I mean, they were yeah. All, those were let's those not act our, like those, those are, are our guys. Those were our guys. <laughs> well, those <laughs> were our guys, Nick. One of the best pitchers was was uh, probably the only guy that doesn't have a chance of making the team. Alan Buznitz. Yeah, he threw a perfect inning. Right. So, it, uh, yeah, that's kind of also where it comes to spring training is just 
sometimes uh, a really fluky. We did, however. Uh, do we do? A, do you want to do a super chat noise? Do you want to do a? Uh, yeah, sure. I, I got a super chat. It's a. Oh wow, that's our super chat. You want me to do it again? So let's set, one more let's time. Set one it more time. One more time. Okay. <laughs> you got to do it. I mean, you, you asked for the noise. Oh, I got to do it too. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. You just got to read it. You, 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 you asked for the. the you asked for the noise. You can't let the man get the noise and then not read the super chat. I feel like he wants to keep doing this. No, 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 no. I think he's waiting for I'm you waiting to hit for you the to... super chat. Oh, oh I'm I'm gonna do... it's going to be a bang, bang, ping. Yes, okay, so you got... now I understand. He does it, you do the super you chat. I was so taken back by no. that noise. That... That's, the sound. Me a That's the sound. That's the sound. Ask me for the noise. We go into our segment. Here we go. Three, two, one. Noise. Oh, super chat from Big C, the Viking helmet guy, four ninety nine. Thank you, Big C. Donating to Elliot's sanity fund. From all the trauma Trace poured on him, he today. doesn't have enough money. For and, that. Uh, and 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 uh, uh, we'll we'll tease this. There was a video for members only on yes. Channel oh. Sports on YouTube that Big C is referring to, but I don't want to spoil it. You got to be a member if you want to see that. Yeah, I got a little heated. A hostile start to the morning. What would you say, Greg? How many minutes did we go without talking? I said two hours, but you know, I was I was in the back here, so maybe I wasn't hearing a lot up there. But there was not a lot of noise coming from the front of the van. Uh, I would say Elliot was like a lost puppy up there in the driver's seat. But here's what I'm going to do: anytime Trace yells at me and he raises his voice, I'm not going to talk to him. I'm going to sit there and I'm going to ignore it. And when right. he's done and when he's let it all out of his system, that's when I'll talk, and that's when we'll open right back up and we'll just move on. So that's how that's how this trip has been. That's how I've operated my entire life. I don't think it's a healthy way of doing it. I, I don't care. When someone yells at me, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pout louder and harder than anybody has ever pouted in their entire life. And that's I've done with that with my parents. I've done that with every person who's right. ever yelled at me. You yell at me, I'm not going to talk to you. So that's how I operate. Fair enough. Greg, I felt that's like on the, members only. I felt like the vibes were. were I didn't know that. Were, I, by the way, I didn't know that was recorded. That was recorded. You're telling me that's recorded. That was recorded. Kirby yeah. was all over it. Kirby members only, over. baby. Members only. He even ended it with yelling members only into yeah. the phone. Yeah. Members only. Greg, I felt like the vibes were very positive in the back of the van though today. Yeah, vibes were very positive. They were not very positive on the way to um, yeah. Vegas after the NASCAR race. But today they were very positive in the back of the van. You know, we were fired up to be here. Yep. Um, watch the Reds score one run. Um, watch Alex Young get zero outs. Um, we were fired up about it. But, yeah, vibes were good. Weather's perfect. I think we're all happy to be here. We, we got to touch on that. That ball field, though, that the kids are playing on, That that's really cool how, how they have that kind of set up. Yeah. Uh, the kids can just kind of do, like, some pickup games. That was definitely one of the, the cooler parts of this ballpark. That's uh, the second nicest field in Cincinnati, if you could relocate it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm being serious. Great American number one, that field number two. The, the grass, unbelievable. I just was walking around a little bit. I was trying to see if I couldn't sneak in that bat end, but the line, the line was like 30 kids deep, and I just wasn't going to do that because, heaven forbid, I miss the nine runs that Alex Young's going to give up. Um where were you pointing at me for something? Mar- Mark asked, what time did we get here? We we literally oh, were yeah, walking that's right. in that's as right. the national anthem was going off. Yes. So if you're wondering why it took a minute to get the stream up going, we got here, we ran in, we came back out, we set up. Yes. Uh, there was no there was no downtime. Mark was asking because I did, I think I made a post earlier today on what time we were going to arrive. I said the closest, oh. the closest person that guesses wins. Um, I'm going to look back at the timestamp on my phone. I will put, put that out tonight and I will claim the winner. I don't want to say, but if I had to guess this is a ballpark answer, it was right around five 52, something like that. That's not right. Well, what are we talking? Are we talking time we parked time that we walked right up there the, and we got, I mean, we literally inside. walked in at like five 58 because they were singing. My the bad. You're right. Five 52, five 58. <laughs> You're right. Nick. <laughs> I mean, there might be someone who said 553. There might have been someone that said 557. I, that's why I'm we gonna, need some precision here. That's what why the, I was going to use the timestamp, Nick, and get it right later. I said if I had to guess, yeah. I'd say ballpark around 552. I'm sorry I didn't say 558. Thank you for the apology. All right. It's about the you same ones I give Elliot. Like that <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I've moved past it. I, I've moved past it. Just like I've moved past. By the way, how much do you really? You, so you've never been here before. Is that correct? No, never. I've never even been to Florida for a spring training. Really? No. Uh, I believe Greg's the only one of us who's been here then for a spring training game. How much stock do you put into these games? You don't put any stock into these games, right? I, I, I like these. We just mentioned it. All of our guys got shelled. I'm not remotely worried about them. I, at this point, it, it, I mean, maybe it's. I, I firmly believe they come here to Arizona for vacation for for a month and a half. 
and, and that's about it. I think they're working out still. I think, the, but it's mostly it's uh, you get the guys back together. It's like it's like uh, camp. It's like summer camp for these guys. And I think you go out there and sure they're trying their best, but at the at the end of the day, you don't put any stock into that, right? No, I mean not much. I mean I, I would say. Maybe I'd look at like Fernando Cruz and I, I, I want to see a little bit more out of Fernando Cruz, a guy that uh, most people said, hey, he absolutely for sure deserves a roster spot, but he's one of the pitchers that has options. And it, it, if you're talking about if we're going to put Fernando Cruz in the opening day roster, we have to almost, almost certainly we have to let someone go from an organization in order for him. So I'd like to see him, you know, pitching with a little bit more urgency other than him. I don't put too much stock in Ashcraft. We saw Ashcraft look like best pitcher in the NL, arguably. Be, for, well, best pitcher in that the absolute worst, the pitcher, worst pitcher on the pitcher. planet, like within week yeah. span of each other. So it's really hard to take any results from from him as as anything uh, of, of substance. How how concerned are we with Alex Young? This is his first game all spring, I think. I mean, I don't know though. I, he didn't get an out, Nick. <laughs> 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 you have to. Well, her, uh, old Hernan Perez did not help him. Let's make sure we. Uh, that's fair. That's, that's fair. That Hernan Perez had a really that's, rough game. That's fair. Base. What's the box score? He gave up seven runs, six earned. Oh, uh, I think it was. Is that right? Zero outs, four hits, uh, six runs, five earned, five earned, two walks, right. no strikeouts, right. one home run. No, I, I, I mean I just asked the question. No, that's fair. Messenger. That's fair. I think Alex Young. I there was a point during the end of last season where I started to be concerned with him. Uh, Sam Mole, I feel like, was our guy that that took over. Yeah, Mole's gonna start the year on the IL. He's another one that's on the IL. Yeah, if that was the other one. I couldn't remember. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's unfortunate. But there is Tyler Gilbert who has uh, thrown the ball decent so far this spring. That is another lefty that that could cost Alex Young his job. Although Alex Young might just, you know, as as a lefty, kind of end up getting the job by default. But if he wants to stay on this team all year, he's gonna have to pitch probably a little better than he pitched at the end of this year. Yeah, and certainly a little bit better than tonight. Would there be a chance, and Greg and I were talking about this during the game, who's going to make that final five? It depends on what Lodolo does. Is there a chance we see Williamson start in the bullpen? I don't think so. I think the Reds are going to try to hold off on moving any starters to relievers as long as they possibly can. Uh, you know, look, just like we saw with, unfortunately, with Noelvi Marte getting suspended, yep. you, you don't want to move a guy from a starter to a reliever, and then you're like, oh, crap, we need to be a starter again. That's how you can, number one, you, I think you could, get guys hurt doing that and number two you just kind of you could mess up young pitchers like that so I, I don't think the reds are really in a need to do anything like that either because i think they do have a decent amount of bullpen depth might not have saw it on the field today but i, I do believe in the long term they do have a lot better bullpen depth than than they've had in quite a while i'm gonna ask one final question here i, I feel like i'm asking too many questions again talking with greg who are the final guys at least on your radar that are trying to make a spot out there who were like I, I I my my name was Martinez Nick Martinez um or not Nick Martini Martini sorry uh outside of that who would you say is still who's still fighting Tony Kemp maybe I mean Tony Kemp Josh Harrison Nick Martini uh Mike Ford um all those guys are pretty much fighting for probably one roster spot because I think Stuart Fairchild will lock at this Stuzan. point I think and, and there's really only one spot unless someone else gets hurt the bullpen side. Um, Thompson probably throw in that mix. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he's probably in there. I, I kind of feel like they're gonna. If you're an infielder, you're gonna have a lot better infield track. I don't think the Reds really want to throw Spencer Steer in the infield unless they have to. That's just my my guess. But if, if Bubba Thompson, you know, really impresses, he might he might win that spot. As far as the bullpen, you're talking about guys like like T.J. Antone, Tony Santiana's throwing the ball really well this spring. Um, as mentioned, Tyler Gilbert is another one. I'm sure there's some other relievers. There's quite a few of, of relievers that kind of uh, uh, fit that that role of uh, of that last guy uh, in the bullpen. It's got to be Martini, right? I like of all the name of all the names that were that we just discussed, Martini seems the most deserving based off of a little bit of the historical perspective of last season. Let's not act like he didn't do anything last season. He had some big time home runs, and then on top of that, you you cut Barrero for one of these guys. And I know people are going to get like upset about you know oh Barrero's terrible this that and the nature but we're talking I mean with all due respect of course we're talking about all the names that you just mentioned and none of those guys are all that exciting Bubba Thompson okay maybe maybe you can you can pull my arm but Harrison and Tony Kim for for to, to get rid of Barrero a guy two years ago that was one of the top prospects in your organization is crazy 
is crazy. And it's also crazy for David Bell to sit here and act like he had he had no chance to make the roster. So in my mind, like they've already made the decision. I really do think that. Like no matter what happens from here on out, they have somebody pegged that they love so much that they were willing to get rid of Barrero or or let Barrero go. That's there, my guess. There is one thing on on Barrero that I hadn't thought about. I kind of thought was like looking through it. I, I saw something about it. The Reds could have put Barrero on waivers before Mark Day's suspension was announced because the waiver process can be like 48 hours. So that actually is a possibility that they just got blindsided and then they tried to backtrack with the whole, hey, was it going to make the team? That that is, that is a possibility yeah. that, that that's how well, it, If that happened, then that's malpractice. Somebody, somebody should be absolutely not fired. I'm not saying someone should be fired, but somebody should have their, their head dragged through this grass right here because they wouldn't have waited. There's no reason not to wait. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I don't understand the Barrero. I'm just I'm just trying to explain why. I don't understand it all. I think they should have rode him out till the, the absolute the last very end. Yeah. I mean we some of the guys we saw playing out there tonight. <laughs> why, yeah, why heard of Perez playing. out there? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So um one question I saw in here that I actually wanted to bring up when Elliot was talking about the rotation, I think Steinman. Um and I, I think Connor Phillips is someone that pitched pretty good. Um he's pitched pretty good this spring. You would think he's probably gonna start in triple A, but right. What are your guys' thoughts? Do you think he has the chance to make the rotation? Long shot? Um, I don't know. Now with the way Nick Martinez has pitched, I mean, Nick Martinez has probably made Connor Phillips almost uh, have, have no shot because I think the way Nick Martinez has pitched and, and some of the, like the comments kind of trying to read between the lines, it sounds like Nick Martinez for sure has the the upper hand for a, um, a rotation spot to start the year. Which is surprising to me because I felt like, based off what David Bell said and what he talked about when they, when they first brought Martinez over, was he always referred to him as a reliever. And then he would he would catch himself and he would say, "Oh, well, you know, if yeah. you need him in the rotation as well." I don't think it was ever a plan to put Martinez in the starting rotation. And maybe maybe I'm wrong, but I was trying to read between the lines there. And um, we'll see. I mean, Lodolo acts like he's completely ready to go. Do we believe that? Is the question. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, and Nick Martinez two, two weeks, two weeks to the regular season starts. I mean, is he going to be able to build himself up to not start on the IL? Yeah. Is, the, the, is the big question, I guess. Well, the only thing is that, that with that is, is I don't really know if you, even building up. Like, I don't think they're going to ask any of these guys to throw that long right. at the beginning of the season, anyways. Give them five. Innings so yeah, they innings. might say he's going to throw three or four. You know, he might throw four innings the first two or three starts, anyways, and then by that point he would be ramped up and he'd probably be fine. And they might do that with most of these guys. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I have a hard time believing they, they believe that many of these younger arms, and I would include Hunter Green in that, are going to throw 200 plus innings. I don't think that's the plan ever with, with at least the way that David Bell already operates. And that's fine. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying I wouldn't use that as a, not that you are, but I wouldn't use that as a reason to not put Lodolo out there because he's not, you know, ready to go seven, eight innings yet. Right. If I was making like a prediction right now, uh, I would say that the Reds start the year with Montas, Green, Ashcraft, Abbott, and Martinez as your five. Williamson and Phillips go to Triple A, uh, and then Lodolo r- most likely would replace Martinez in the rotation. They move him to the bullpen unless Andrew Abbott pitches poorly. I think Andrew. I, I don't think Andrew Abbott is as safe. He has thrown poorly. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, in the in the major right. in the actual well, season. I, 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 genuine question, and I'm not just this isn't me just being a, a Williamson stand, but like, what does Williamson have to do to start to get the same street cred as 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 all these other guys? I agree. Like, I, agree. I I mean, at yeah. some point, it's like this guy is throwing the ball really, really well. Ever since the damn rainstorm and Charlie pissed him off, he's been <laughs> he's been elite. He's been elite. And I love Charlie, but I mean, if he could start doing that for some more of these guys tonight, that'd be great. But I, I it's just one of those things where. I think that he's earned a spot. Now, whether he will get it, I don't know. And I'd rather have Martinez. I'd rather take my chances having a, having a Martinez in a bullpen situation earlier in the season to be able to go multiple innings and have Williamson be the fifth starter than ha- not have Williamson at all, put Martinez in the starting rotation, and then now you have a bullpen that – I'm not saying the bullpen's bad. The bullpen might have been the best strength the Reds had. But now you're looking at a bullpen where you're starting to say, okay – we got a lot of. It's like any other bullpen, I guess. But you're not you're not full fledged confidence in multiple guys that can go two or three innings. That's all. Yeah, I mean Martinez. I mean threw the ball incredible against the Dodgers. That was their A lineup out there. So I you have to. Well, are we put in stock in spring training games, or are we not? Well, <laughs> Martinez does have a track record, though. This isn't some guy that that 
was a non-roster invitee. I mean, this is a a guy that that was a <laughs> a above average pitcher. That's fair, but Andrew Abbott and I, Williamson are the same guy, I agree. and Andrew Abbott always gets the benefit of the doubt, and Williamson doesn't. And because it's all, it, and, and it, you know why it is? It's because of basically their track record through the minors. And there was a little bit of a stint there where Williamson struggled mightily, mightily, mightily. And then all of a sudden they threw him to the Wolves in Colorado and we all laughed about it, thinking that he was going to get torn apart. And he struggled a little bit, but then he he threw the ball just as well as the rest of them, is yeah. all I'm saying. I agree completely. I mean, Andrew Abbott had the first, like, two months where he was incredible and then he kind of fell off. So right. there's no guarantee that that I know it was it was made out to be he got tired, which is a very fair. valid and fair excuse. Yes. But that doesn't necessarily mean that there's not more to that right so i agree i i don't think that i don't think there should be some huge gap between andrew abbott and brandon williamson i'm with you completely on that Fair. all right any other wrap final thoughts here um before we get going obviously have starting starting pitchers tomorrow maybe we'll get into kind of our our plans tomorrow um off the top of my hat i head i believe it's montas you can double check check me on that here in just a moment but um final thoughts here before we exit goodyear stadium uh ballpark <laughs> ballpark i had to fix that thank you it was I, I mean no i don't think i have any final thoughts i'm ready for tomorrow i'm, I'm ready to roll that game sucked but you know when, when you're in spring training you're gonna get some of those clunkers and, and tomorrow like nick says they matter a lot if, if we play really good and if, if we don't they they don't matter at all so that one didn't matter tomorrow's if we play well they're gonna matter <laughs> well said elliot well said um <laughs> my final thought is i'm tired of watching mike mustakas hit balls into orbit oh, we against even... the reds you know that guy, he hit, he, oh, he hit so it into fat. orbit. He took 168 seconds to round the bases, and I'm tired of it. I don't care that it's spring training. That matters to me. I'm tired of watching Mike Moustakas <laughs> hit balls to Saturn. So <laughs> that's my final thought. Fat, fat moose. It's the worst. It's oh, the yeah. worst. Oh, Red's, Red's keeping the dream alive for, uh, for Moustakas another year. Uh, tomorrow we have Frankie Montas, Justin Brule, Tony Santion, Casey Legamina, and Zach Maxwell. So that's obviously right. not as sexy of pitchers, but I'm sure the Reds will throw uh, – a uh, one hit shutout tomorrow. That's right. Why? Just, be, <laughs> just because that's how, how this thing works. Uh, Greg, I want to ask you. I know you were on it more than me today. The Reds did play a a minor league game. It says in the notes it's a minor league game, but I think it's probably should have been a B game because uh, Brandon Williamson, Brent Suter, Al, Al, Alexis Diaz, Lucas Sims, and Brooks Krisky all pitched in that game. Did you have anything on that? We've been kind of driving and trying to follow things yeah no nothing it's hard you don't really get stats from that type of game um so but obviously again i think the brandon williamson stuff is really interesting that we just talked about but i mean you look at just to add to that conversation i guess a little bit you look to um at the beginning of spring training how many people actually gave brandon williamson a chance to make um the starting five you know not many um everybody was throwing everybody else in there and i think like trey said i mean he pitched very well throughout the second half of um last year and he's pitched pretty well this spring so um obviously we don't know how he did today but he's pitched pretty well so far in the spring and um i think he's got a good chance to make the rotation but we'll see we'll see yeah it doesn't look anything on that maybe we'll see in the game notes tomorrow but hopefully we'll be able to find some of the some of these nuggets out this week while we're here that's right that, that no one else knows because that's there's right. literally no one in the world that knows well there's someone in the world that knows but there's no one that's reported what brandon williamson did today and that's our quest is to find out information like that this week Let's find out. We'll figure it out. Um, quick here notes before we get off. Uh, we got a couple super chats. Oh, there's more in here. A couple super chats. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, do you know how often MLB drug tests? Is it random? Yes, it's random. Yep. Um, the only person that doesn't know is pretty much everybody, and especially Noelle Marte. Um, Molly, Nutcutter Nation. Five months. Thank you, Molly. She says, do any of you know how often MLB drug tests? I don't know. This must have been a thing. A popular question this must have been a question. Yeah, uh, nobody knows. I think it's just random. That's why they call them random drug, drug tests. So hopefully you don't take drugs. You don't have to worry about it. That's which, the point of it. Which makes it even more crazy that, that players try this. You know there's always a chance they're going to test you at any second. Well, here's the thing about cheaters. They yeah. don't really have much of a moral compass, and they think they can get by with everything. Okay. As we have moths flying into yeah, that the, was a to, big to the to the to the to the Goodyear Taylor's gonna uh, that camera van out. cave. <laughs> but um, but here's the thing. Do us a favor, okay? I know. I also said that we were gonna do a drawing tonight. But here's the thing. <laughs> we went to Vegas for two days. We just got to the ballpark. We did a live show. We're going to go check into our Airbnb for the first time. Wish us luck on getting in there. I guarantee you, 
that if you send me a screenshot already, you will be in a hat tomorrow night. Or Elliot. Or Elliot. Or Elliot. Either one of us. Or Nick. Or Reds Daily. Or Taylor. Or Jeremiah. If you send a screenshot to any of us, your name will be in a hat tomorrow night when we're watching the UC versus Kansas game. And we will draw the winner at halftime of that game. We will draw the winner at halftime of that game. That'll be fun. And uh, it'll be $300 to somebody. And we'll have fun doing it. But with us, anybody else has any more questions? That'll do it from uh, we Goodyear an Ballpark. Are we doing an ad read? Yeah, we probably should do an yeah, ad let's read. Let's do an ad read. Uh, Going to do an ad read? Yeah, well, I don't know him, but he's got them. Well, we'll do D- we'll do DSC in the podcast in the morning. But shout yes. out to DSC Commodities, a leader in renewable commodities. Uh, John, I think he's gonna uh, John is gonna join us from tr- at here at some point in spring training. I believe. Cannot wait. Cannot he's wait. Working to meet on John. trying to get out here. Um, so shout out to John if he can make it. Um, we would love to, to meet him. Greg, what's your favorite thing about the Game Time app? Game Time app, it's amazing. You know, people like Nick Kirby can go to Gonzaga in San Francisco, <laughs> and you can get great last minute deals and use whatever the code that Kirby's going to tell you is. Great app. Get the Game Time app and use this code. The code for Chatterbox Reds is Cincy. That is C I N C Y, and you can get twenty dollars off your first purchase of that code. It's as easy as it gets. The, the, the app is flawless. It's perfect. It's perfection. Molly's been uh, been been shouting out in the, the chat how easy it is to use. She got tickets for opening day using it. Uh, so, look, I know opening day, it's, it's creeping up. We were looking it at the calendar. Great. I was like, that's like almost two weeks away. We're, we're getting there. Yeah. So, uh, if you need tickets for opening day, be sure to use the, the uh, Game Time app and use that promo code Cincy. That is C-I-N-C-Y. Ooh. Love right. that. I think it's time for Ben. Yeah, we're going to head back to the Airbnb. We love all of you. We appreciate all of you for tuning in here to Chatterbox Reds Late Night Edition back on the East Coast from Goodyear Ballpark. That'll do it. 